series of uh, biosignaling lectures. This is the seventh lecture, and we'll be discussing uh, in this lecture receptor tyrosine kinase signaling. We'll be focusing on its function and various types of receptors uh, for receptor tyrosine kinase signaling, which are available on the surface of the cell. And particularly, we'll be focusing on insulin and its signaling and how it uh, results in the divergence in metabolism control. As is required in every lecture, uh, a brief introduction about the receptor tyrosine kinase signaling. Uh, this signaling is actually a subclass of the uh, higher umbrella group of the uh, receptor signalings, which are uh, protein tyrosine kinase uh, signalings. These were discovered uh, first of all in sarcoma viruses by Hunter et al. in 1990. And they are named as because they contain uh, tyrosine motifs. Uh, located internally to these receptors and these tyrosine uh, motifs are usually phosphorylated during the relay of the information at specific serine and threonine residue hence the name uh, protein tyrosine kinases protein tyrosine kinases uh, depending upon the substrates which are located downstream it uh, they are categorized into different uh, categories Two of the important categories of these protein tyrosine kinases is receptor tyrosine kinases and non-receptor tyrosine kinases. So protein tyrosine kinases can be broadly classified into two categories as you can also see in the accompanying picture. However, both relay the information uh, downwards and downstream uh, by phosphorylation of a specific tyrosine motifs at uh, the serine or threonine residues. So accordingly, the structure of the protein tyrosine kinase and its position in the cell, it can be uh, further subdivided into three different categories. So two of them are important, uh, which are receptor tyrosine kinases and non-receptor tyrosine kinases, which I also uh, already told you. And non-receptor tyrosine kinases is also called as the JAK-STAT signaling uh, pathway. Uh, I will not be discussing this in this lecture. We'll be focusing mainly on the receptor tyrosine kinases. Uh, so receptor tyrosine kinases are the receptors located on the exterior surface of the cell. They bind to the ligand and they behave both as receptors as well as the enzymes. The enzymatic activity is the phosphorylating capability of these receptors. They will be able to uh, phosphorylate the specific uh, tyrosine residues located on the external, on the internal uh, part of this uh, receptor, as you can see in the picture here. Uh, while binding and after binding to the um, ligand, they will uh, cause the phosphorylation of uh, their own motifs located inside the cell for the relay of the information and the signaling to take place. These receptor tyrosine kinases respond to uh, different kinds of ligands, which can be a wide varieties of growth factors like uh, epidermal growth factor and so on, and cytokines and hormones as well. And uh, in receptor tyrosine kinase uh, family, uh, the receptor in itself uh, is composed of three functional regions, as you can see in the picture. The external region, which is the one which interacts externally of the cell and uh, interacts with the uh, ligands of different signals, as well as then there is a second part, which is called as a transmembrane protein, which will connect the external and ex uh, internal uh, motifs. And the third one is the uh, interior located domain, which is tyrosine kinase region, where many tyrosines are present, uh, which need to be phosphorylated during the signaling process. And these are usually also called as ITAM motifs, uh, internal uh, tyrosine containing motifs, which uh, lead to the phosphorylation as well as the biological uh, reactions and mediate the signaling pathway downstream. RTK types are very diverse types of uh, receptors and they are present uh, almost in every uh, cell in the human body and they respond to uh, many different kinds of the signals though that can be epidermal growth factors, PGDFs, insulin and insulin-like growth factor, nervous growth factor and about 50 different kinds of RTKs have been uh, found and discovered in the human cells and broadly they are classified into six different groups. 
uh, first group uh, and first subclass of category uh, usually has a single um, transmembrane uh, polypeptide which contains either two or three um, proline regions these proline regions are located on the exterior surface of the uh, this receptor towards the uh, environment in which this cell is then another important category out of these six are the uh, second uh, class of this uh, RTKs to which the uh, insulin receptor belongs which responds to the insulin you can see they are heterotetramers containing alpha chains and beta chains and similarly has an external transmembrane and an internal domain then the third and fourth class are important because they usually contain the immunoglobin like uh, motif on the exterior surface and so on and so forth we'll be focusing here on the subclass second which is a heterotetramer and is a receptor for the insulin for the insulin signaling so a brief introduction about the insulin insulin is an anabolic hormone usually it favors the synthesis of glycogen uh, triglycerides and protein by modulating the metabolism of these macromolecules it has a half life of 6 minutes in uh, the serum when from the secretion to its degradation degradation it is secreted and produced and secreted by beta islets of langerhans in pancreas and after a half life of about six minutes which extends to 12 minutes um, of the full life it is degraded by insulinase in the liver in its structure it is a dipeptide uh, meaning it contains one alpha chain and one beta chain it is actually uh, matured from the pre pro and pro insulin into its final functional form of dipeptide containing two peptide um, uh, polypeptides which are uh, together uh, held by the disulfide linkages the one polypeptide is called as alpha chain which is about uh, 21 amino acids in the mature insulin and beta chain of about 30 amino acids these two chains are uh, linked with each other by two different kinds of uh, disulfide linkages intra or uh, inter uh, the bonds which uh, make up this mature insulin are the um, disulfide bond between 6 and 11th residue within the alpha chain and then two disulfide bonds between alpha and beta chain at 7th, 7th position and 20 and 19th position these three disulfide uh, linkages uh, help uh, the insulin to attain a full, uh, final mature conformation for its action. Metabolically speaking, insulin is an antagonist to glucagon in its function and both uh, help in regulation of the glucose uh, hemostasis in the humans and they uh, both uh, respond to the change of blood glucose levels insulin is secreted during the fed state immediately after taking meals where glucagon is the hormone which predominates during the in between the meals or during the starvation phase of the feed uh, fed cycle uh, so when we eat the meal and uh, the blood glucose levels shoot up uh, it goes to the beta cells of pancreas and via GPCR signaling it uh, mediates the secretion of an insulin from the beta cells of uh, pancreas into the blood the insulin moves and it functions as extracellular messenger molecule informing the all other cells that glucose blood glucose levels are very much high and we need to uh, incorporate it within uh, ourselves into the cells uptake it into the cells and then metabolize it accordingly so cells will respond to the insulin by increasing the glucose uptake from the blood additionally also when glucose enters into the cell the cells within the cell the insulin also cause the effect on metabolism uh, like these three effects first is to increase the glycogen synthesis this is done by activating glycogen synthase via glycogen synthase kinase beta then uh, to increase also their triglyceride synthesis that means fatty acids are being synthesized this happens by concomitantly deactivating the hormone sensitive lipase which will prevent the degradation of the fatty acids and third is to decrease the gluconeogenesis by de deactivating 
glycogen phosphorylase this will prevent the glycogen from getting degraded and making more glucose and this happens in response to the insulin which in turn is uh, reflective of the fed state of this uh, human body insulin signaling is the classical example of the receptor tyrosine kinase signaling and it is mediated through insulin by binding it to the insulin receptor which is a class second uh, subgroup of the rtks as we already uh, mentioned in the introduction section so the insulin receptor is actually a heterotetramer which contains two alpha and two beta subunits alpha chain is extracellular located and it is the one which will interact with the external environment and bind to the insulin uh, and beta chain is located uh, through the plasma membrane and it contains the three different domains the extracellular domain which will be interacting with the alpha chain and bound to it by disulfide linkages the second one uh, part of this uh, beta chain is the transmembrane domain which passes right through the plasma membrane of this target cell and then there is a cytoplasmic part which is internal which contains many tyrosine uh, residues which need to be phosphorylated for the relay of the signaling so a receptor on the surface of this target cell has a half life of our uh, seven hours after which it is degraded the binding of an insulin and thereby activating of the um, insulin receptor takes place in a multiple step process uh, a single molecule of insulin um, binds to this insulin receptor for activation and binding when it uh, binds it needs both uh, alpha um, subunits to interact with this insulin molecule this will cause the dimerization of the insulin receptor which causes repositioning it will move uh, towards each other more close to each other and the internal domains of the beta chain will move further close and hug each other the tyrosine kinase domain uh, of this will be then uh, in a so much of close proximity that they will be juxtapositioning facing each other and after which uh, their own enzymatic activity uh, the uh, phosphorylating activity of the each of the domain will cause the phosphorylation of the tyrosine residues in this uh, beta chain in this domain of the beta chain and result in the trans autophosphorylation process so most of the tyrosine residues uh, for uh, this uh, um, activated uh, insulin receptor will be then phosphorylated when all and most of the tyrosine residues in this uh, domain are phosphorylated we call this uh, ir as the activated one the phosphorylation of the tyrosine uh, residues in the beta chain uh, is actually happening at the activation loop of this beta chain and they uh, themselves will turn uh, as the docking sites for all the downstream proteins uh, to be activated uh, in a signal cascade as you can see in the accompanying picture so when the uh, tyrosine motifs and tyrosine residues in the activation loop of the beta chain are activated then all the downstream proteins are then moving towards this receptor and binding to these uh, activated tyrosine uh, residues and in turn they get activated by the process of cascading mechanism so the phosphorylation causes the conformational change in the activation loop of the beta chain leaving the catalytic cleft open for substrate binding which are all the substrates which are downstream of this signaling so important tyrosine which needs to be uh, phosphorylated for the activation of the uh, beta do uh, domain uh, interior domain of the beta chain is the tyrosine 960 so until and unless this 960th residue of the beta chain gets phosphorylated there will be no downward cascading of the signal so recapitulating the signaling cascade up till now is that the insulin molecule after secretion in response to the increased glucose uh, levels in the body will move to the target cell it will bind to one of the alpha subunits of the insulin receptor this will cause the another uh, subunit of alpha to bind and cause dimerization of the receptor when the dimerization happens the beta motifs which are located 
inside the uh, cell will move uh, closer to each other will be in close proximity this will cause the uh, autophosphorylation of the tyrosine residues in this um, beta subunit and when tyrosine residues are uh, phosphorylated they, the whole insulin receptor will get activated and as we already know that these phosphotyrosine uh, motifs and the residues will act as docking sites for all the downstream proteins which are under the influence of this insulin receptor specifically here the first one is the irs insulin response substrate which will bind to the activated insulin receptor and get itself phosphorylated which will then in turn cause the activation of many different kinds of uh, proteins downstream to the irs and hence lead to the divergence of the signaling as well So moving to the second phase of this receptor tyrosine kinase signaling is the internal cascading now. Uh, we activated the insulin receptor and now the cascading has to start by the downstream proteins. Here the first and foremost downstream protein which is responsive to the activated insulin receptor are the effector proteins which are called as insulin receptor substrates. And they are of two different types IRS1 and IRS2. And uh, this IRSs also have three domains uh, within them that is called as pH domain, PTP domain and the uh, tail containing tyrosine phosphorylation sites. IRS will bind to the insulin receptor via it is phosphotyrosine binding domain which is the second domain. Uh, and this uh, domain is actually utilizing the docking sites of the uh, insulin receptor which are the phosphotyrosine residues. And in turn they will get activated when it gets activated by phosphorylation uh, automatically then uh, the irs will relay the signal to its downstream proteins as you can see in the picture there are a number of different kinds of um, downstream proteins which are under the influence of irs and this also causes the divergence of different kinds of um, activation of different kinds of pathways and different kinds of uh, proteins downstream to the irs so insulin will cause a diversification of the uh, signaling and it controls not only metabolism but also secretion of certain kinds of vesicles here two important um, effects are uh, seen one is the metabolic effect and another is the fusion of the glut4 vesicles to the membrane of the target cell so as to allow more and more uh, movement of the outside glucose into the cell so activated IRSs will then will interact with the phospholipids also via uh, PDK. PI3 kinase is one of the effector of this uh, receptor tyrosine kinase, uh, especially of IRS, uh, which works under the influence of uh, activated IRS. PI3 kinase has two subunits. One is the SH2 domain, which will bind to the IRS for its activity. Another is the uh, catalytic domain, which causes the phosphorylation of the inositol bound to it. Uh, as you can see on the left hand side of the picture, these kinases are uh, important for the conversion of the phosphoinositol into several kinds of the second messengers, uh, some of which you have already seen in the PLC beta signaling that is uh, PIP3. So these kinds of uh, signaling uh, molecules are produced by the kinase activity. This kinase activity is under the influence of uh, IRS. So PI3 kinase will be activated and uh, this will be because of the binding uh, of this PI3 kinase to the activated IRS1 or 2 via uh, its pH domain. And the function of uh, then activated PI3 kinase, as I already told you, is to convert the phosphorylated install into a number of different kinds of uh, second messengers. Important one is the PI3, PIP3 or uh, IP3, which we just went through in the PLC beta signaling. And we know that PIP3 is important in calcium uh, surge also in the target cell. Uh, 
Here PIP3 intermediates the function of insulin signaling in regulation of the blood glucose by activating a number of different kinds of kinases and number of different kinds of proteins which are located uh, under its influence, particularly the glucose metabolism and fat metabolism uh, enzymes. So what happens after the uh, activation of PI3 kinase by IRS uh, through its uh, binding of the SH2 domain is the two different arms of the signaling. One is the PKC arm, another is the PDK arm. PKC is a protein kinase C which will be activated by IP3, uh, PIP3 and it will cause the phosphorylation of a number of different kinds of proteins. These proteins are actually inhibitory for these GLUT4 vesicles. When the inhibition will be lifted off by the phosphorylation by PKC, this will cause the movement of the GLUT4 vesicles which are internal to the cell towards the plasma membrane. And more and more uh, GLUT4 vesicles will fuse with the plasma membrane of this target cell, expressing the uh, GLUT4 on the surface of the cell. This GLUT4 are the transporters for uh, carrying glucose inside the cell from the outside serum, from the outside blood. And hence, more and more glucose will be moving towards uh, the cytosol of the cell. And afterwards, it will be metabolized. The second arm of this is the PDK. PDK in turn will cause the phosphorylation of the protein kinase B. And protein kinase B is known to regulate uh, the metabolism of the glucose. Uh, as well as uh, the secondary metabolites like uh, fatty acids and proteins via GSK3 beta signaling and PD3 beta signaling. The net effect is to increase the synthesis of glycogen and to prevent the de degradation of the fats into fatty acid and glycerol. And hence more and more glucose which is uptaken by GLUT4 vesicles uh, goes into the uh, into uh, storage as glycogen. As well as there is an mTOR pathway uh, by which uh, it will increase the protein synthesis. So insulin uh, affects not only by uh, increasing the expression of the GLUT4 vesicles on the surface of the target cell uh, so as to transport the glucose inside but also when this glucose is inside it is um, more and more fed to the glycogen pathway so as it will be stored to glycogen as well as uh, for the synthesis of proteins and fats. The current slide shows you the effect of the insulin as you can see in the accompanying picture and insulin uh, causes uh, its most of the effects via protein phosphatase 1. It will cause protein phosphatase 1 to activate and this will cause the glycogen synthesis to get dephosphorylated. When this is dephosphorylated the glycogen synthesis enzyme in itself is activated to cause the synthesis of glycogen from this uh, glucose which we just uh, took inside the cell. In this another pathway also it uh, deactivates the uh, kinase, phosphorylase kinase by causing the dephosphorylation. The dephosphorylated form of this kinase is inactive and hence uh, no glycogen will get degraded. So at the same time when it is activating the glycogen synthase, it is deactivating the phosphorylase kinase. So the net effect of the insulin uh, via its protein phosphatase mechanism, which is the another mechanism by which it can act um, uh, apart from the receptor tyrosine kinases, is by directly uh, influencing these two enzymes so that more and more glucose will be converted to glycogen. As we have seen in the previous uh, slide, uh, the another arm of the insulin uh, action is by regulating the GSK3 beta activity. GSK is the glycogen synthase kinase. It is that kinase which phosphorylates glycogen synthase. Uh, under the influence of insulin, uh, this uh, GSK3 beta uh, is converted back to GSK uh, uh, phosphorylated form which is inactive. When GSK3 uh, beta uh, kinase is inactive, it causes the glycogen synthase to be in an active state. So that more and more glucose which is just uptaken will be converted to glycogen. So under the influence of the insulin, which is another arm of the uh, insulin mechanism, uh, 
is that the kinase which regulates the activity of glycogen synthase in itself becomes inactive through phosphorylation by protein kinase beta. Another direct effect of the insulin action is uh, to regulate the activity of hormone sensitive lipase. Hormone sensitive lipase is uh, actually the lipase which degrades the fatty acids into glycerol, diacylglycerol and uh, free fatty acids and uh, causes their um, mobility uh, outside the cell. Uh, and it is activated by uh, protein kinase uh, A which is under the influence of CAMP. However, uh, insulin, as we already know, via mediates is most of the functions through uh, phosphatase 1 activity. Phosphatase 1, under the influence of insulin, will cause the uh, dephosphorylation of this uh, hormone sensitive lipase, which will prevent the fatty acid degradation. And hence, more and more fatty acids will be now stored under the influence of uh, insulin. As you can also see, the insulin uh, functions antagonistic to the glucagon. So either of the two will be functioning uh, during the uh, cycle of a cell, uh, depending upon whether it is a fed state or in a, in a starved state. In a fed state, insulin will cause the uh, activity of this hormone sensitive lipase to be seized. So this was pretty much it about the receptor tyrosine kinase signaling, particularly the, how insulin mediates its function. You can visit my Amazon page for the number of different kinds of books on biochemistry, biotechnology and molecular biology for your benefit. And do subscribe to my channel uh, for further uh, videos which I will upload in due time.